A side rotation in the big spiral means the wheel should have a tilt of 60 degrees with respect to the floor. When the position of the chin nest is ideal and the wheel has the right angle, the wheel travels a half circle during one rotation. So after two rotations, the gymnast should be back at her starting point. The gymnast should be able to do a side rotation in straight line. In spiral, the bindings are not mounted in the middle of the board, but one hole towards the rim, so the gymnast stands closer to the rim. In a side rotation, it is important to have a good body position. The ideal body position is with the feet on the rim. This provides balance for the gymnast. The body is straight. The gymnast leans slightly to the front, so the head is positioned underneath the rim handle. In the big side spiral, this position helps to perform a good circle, while the wheel does not get too low to the ground. In spiral, the wheel is usually 10 cm smaller than the wheel used in straight line. To train the gymnast in obtaining a good body position, she can perform the following exercise. The gymnast stands with her head underneath the rim handle and arms next to her body. She brings her arms up to grab the rung handles with her hands in underarm grip. After holding on for a short time, she brings her arms down again. Let the gymnast repeat this movement a few times until she can grab the handles blindly without altering her body position. If the gymnast misses the handles, she can be instructed to feel that the hands are on a line beyond the back of her head. As from her perspective, the handles are behind her head. In the ideal position, the hand on the wrong handle has the little finger right next to the bend in the handle. To set the wheel in spiral, the start of the wheel can be practiced in two parts. First, to set the wheel in motion, the gymnast leans on one leg, pushing the wheel. She releases her leading hand while bending the trailing arm. The free arm stays up and straight. The gymnast rotates her upper body one quarter so her shoulder line is parallel to the rungs. The back leg is bent and the back is slightly hollow. With the trailing arm, the wheel is pushed back to the starting position, while the gymnast rotates her body back to sideways and grips the rung handle with her free hand. The hands should make contact just before the boards are on the floor again. The wheel rotates a small distance before it is stopped. Repeat the exercise a few times to give the gymnast a good sense of the movement. To tip the wheel, the gymnast brings back her body and forcefully pulls on the wheel. As the wheel is tipping backwards, the gymnast brings her body forward again. At the same time, the gymnast pulls on the wheel, tipping it forward. The coach catches the wheel and holds it standing on one rim. The position of the gymnast is checked to see if the body is straight with the head underneath the rim handle. Repeat the exercise until the, until the gymnast requires the right body position on the forward tip. When the gymnast can set the wheel in motion and can tip the wheel, both exercises can be combined into one. At the beginning, the coach stands in front of the wheel. He lets it pass before him and catches the rim in passing, and then escorts the wheel from the forward tip until one eighth to one quarter of a rotation. To teach the first rotations in side position, the coach is tipping the wheel forward and sets it in motion, all the while paying attention to the body position of the gymnast. When the gymnast has trouble to keep her position, you can use the straight line wheel, which is bigger than the spiral wheel, she then has less room to wobble. When the gymnast keeps her body in the right position, she starts with the arm movement. As the wheel nears the upright position, the leading arm is straightened and the trailing arm is bent. 
At the same time, the gymnast puts her weight on the leading leg in rolling direction first. As the wheel is in an upside down position, the gymnast bends the leading arm while straightening the trailing arm. The weight is also positioned on the trailing leg. The coach assists the movement vocally, instructing the gymnast to pull. He still pays attention to the body position, correcting the position when it is lost. Now the gymnast can try to set the wheel in motion and continue in the side movement. The wheel is still guided by the coach. As the gymnast gets better and better, the coach can reduce his help and just follow to intervene only when necessary. When the gymnast is confident in her abilities, the coach can watch from the sidelines. The gymnast can vary her arm position. The side rotation can be performed with one arm. The leading hand holds on to the wrong handle. The trailing arm is held with the hand just above the hip bone. Attention should be paid to the body position. Rotation of the shoulders or hip should be corrected. In another variation, the gymnast positions both hands on the rim handle above her head. The leading arm is transitioned first. This move can also be performed one-handed. It does not matter which hands hold the rim handle and which hand is held on the hip.